Hello one and all and welcome to the Math Magic Show. In this one we're going to take a look at solving this linear programming question in great depth. So let's dive right into the mysteries. <laughs> all right, friends, we have here the bottom says x is greater than or equal to zero. All right, so you got to somehow handle this part. Now look at the symbol. Remember, greater than or equal to. So the equal to part, do that part first. When you say that x is equal to zero, so they by the equal to part, that's like saying you are along this line right here, right? This is x equals zero, this line. The y-axis, in other words, because here, every x-coordinate is equal to zero. Okay, so that part is handled. But then it says the greater than part, so you have to handle this. What does that mean? That means you got to shade everything to the right of here, okay? So kind of gently, I'm going to shade all of this to the right. Okay, not too many lines, that can get a bit overwhelming. Now... So that part is done basically, okay, like this part right here, oh yeah, okay. So now it says y is greater than or equal to zero, same logic applies, right, just break this down. So y, let me do it in this color so you can see it better. So y is greater than or equal to zero, first just handle the equal to part. Equal to zero, what does that mean? Again, that means the following then, okay, that it's this line right here because for any point along the x-axis, y is equal to zero, right? So this is another way of saying y equals zero. And then the part that says greater than zero right here, greater than zero, that means you're going to shade right above because here y is always greater than zero. So each symbol present in each inequality tells you something else. Now look at this one. So y is less than or equal to four. So the equal to part says... You're going to draw a line through y equals 4. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4 here, okay? I've tried to mark these pretty well. So y equals 4 is about, all right, hold on. Maybe it's about this line right here, okay? This is y equals 4. But then notice it says less than. So there's the less than part of the inequality. That means you got to shade below that line, okay? So that shading I'm going to indicate with these slanted lines. All right. So that's done. Now look at this. X plus 2y is less than or equal to 10. That's a whole lot of work to get that done. So let's do it though. X plus 2y is less than or equal to 10. Let's do it up here. Okay, so x plus 2y is less than or equal to 10. So first of all, pretend it's an equation. So it becomes x plus 2y equals 10. Because then when x is 0, you find that 2y is equal to 10 because x is 0. So you find that y is equal to 5, right? Divided by 2. So that's going to give you the point, in other words, 0, 0,5. That's a point, right? Then when y is equal to 0, what are you going to have next? Think about it. So when y is 0, then it just leaves x. So you have x is equal to 10, which means you end up with the point 10, 0. So now we can mark these points. Take a look. So let's see, 0, 0,5. So that's about here. Right? This is 0, 0, 0,5 right here. Okay, that's a point. And the other point is 10, 0. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This is 10, 0 right here, okay? Then, of course, what we do is we connect these with a straight line. So let me do that right now. Let me grab my ruler. All right, friends, we got to do this carefully. These are very extensive problems, so you don't want to waste time by making mistakes. All right, so that looks like this. Hold on. There we are, that's that line. So I need to refer this to this line now. Let me mark it, otherwise it's easy to forget what things are here. So this is x plus 2y equals 10. That's that line. Okay. Now, you have to handle the fact it is an inequality though. This is the equal to part you use for marking the boundary. The less than part you use for marking the shading region. So. Because it says less than zero, take a look. Like if you do zero, comma zero, plug that point in, right? Which is like the origin, basically. You're going to have zero plus two times zero. Is that less than or equal to 10? Well, zero plus two times zero is zero. Less than 10, that's true. So that means with respect to this line, you would now shade as follows, okay? Uh, you basically would shade hmm, like this region right here, below the line, like that, okay? Including this little corner here, good. Let's go on. Uh, next one. So the next one says 3x plus 2y is less than 18. So, okay, it's 3x plus 2y is less than 18. So, again, pretend it's an equation so you can mark the boundary line. 
So you're going to have 3x plus 2y is equal to 18. Okay, when x is 0, you got to get x and y intercepts. So x is 0. You're going to have 2y equals 18. So this means that y is equal to 9. Since y is 9, then this is the point 0, 9. Okay, next one then. When y has the value 0, so you're going to have, let's see. So 3x plus 2 times 0 is equal to 18. So that's going to leave you here with 3x equals 18. So 3x equals 18, which means down here that x is equal to 6. So in other words, this is going to give you the point 6, 0. All right, so that's how you do that one. So now you have to mark these points. So let's do it. Okay, be careful. 0, 9. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So 0, 9 is this point up here, 0, 9, right here, okay? The other point is 6, 0. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that's this point right here. This is 6, 0. Like this. Okay. Just like this point right here, remember, this is not just 4. It's really 0, 4 for this point, right? This is 10, this is 10, 0, 6, 0. Good. Now, we can connect these with a straight line. So let me just grab my ruler. <laughs> okay, let's do that. So let's see. It's going to go from there to here. Let's do this carefully. Let's not make a mess. Okay, so let's see. All right. Let me do it. There you go. So that's done. Good. So now we have these two lines. And again, now you have to handle the fact that it's an inequality. So you got to take care of this less than part. So again, if you plug in 0, 0, you would have 3 times 0 plus 2 times 0. Is that less than 18, right? That is what we are checking. So this is all 0. Less than 18 is true. So that means you would shade below that line, like this. Shade everywhere below this line, okay? So now, just to emphasize, let's mark off the region of interest. So the region of interest would be this one. Let me see, do I have any... Uh... Okay, I'm going to have to go with this one. So it's this, it's this, including this corner point, here, including this corner point, here, including this corner point, down to here, including this corner point. So there's some polygon that you see there outlined in white, okay? So in other words, like this, okay? I'm going to thicken all of the shading so we don't get confused. All of this, all right. Now, we know this point, we know this point, we know this point, 0, 4. We can find this point pretty easily. So for that point, think about it for a second. So along that point, along this line rather, this is y equals 4 always, okay? And this is the intersection with the line x plus 2y equals 10. So what you do is you just replace y with 4. So it's going to give you x plus 2 times 4 is equal to 10. So you're going to have x is equal to 10 minus 8. So x is equal to 2. Which means this point here has these coordinates. 2 comma 4. 2 comma 4. That's what this is. Let me erase this, okay? So 2 comma 4 right here. 2 comma 4. Those are the coordinates of that point. Now we just have to also find the coordinates of this point, right there. That's the intersection between the two lines that we've drawn. So we can do that by solving a system to find a point of intersection. So let's do it. So you're going to take x plus 2y. Okay, you're going to pretend it's equal to 10. Then you're going to take the other one, uh, 3x plus 2y. Okay, that's equal to 18. And let's solve this system. So we can do that by multiplying the top equation by negative 1. It's going to give you negative x minus 2y equals negative 10. You can add to it the bottom equation, 3x plus 2y is equal to 18. So you're going to add this straight down. So negative x plus 3x is positive 2x. A uh, nice thing about these is they're opposites, so they cancel. And the negative 10 plus 18 will give you a positive 8. So x is equal to 4. So x is equal to 4, and this is confirmed graphically because, look, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, right? This is 4 right here. So if you look up to the point, you see it really is equal 4. Now, uh, once you know the value of x, you can find the value of y using one of these equations. So let's use for that purpose the top equation. So when x is 4, you're going to have 4 plus 2y is equal to 10. So it's going to give you 2y is equal to 10 minus 4, which is 6. So y is equal to 3. 
Well, this is also confirmed graphically, look, because this is one, this is two, and this is three here, right? So look, you see? Correct. So now this point has these specific coordinates, four comma three. Now that we have everything sketched out, and we have all the corner points identified, the last stage in the process, remember, is to actually do the maximization by plugging in the corner points and seeing what comes out. So I'm going to try that right now. Okay, let's go around. So where am I going to write this? These questions are so extensive that... Uh, let's see, I'm going to erase this. I'm going to try to squeeze that into the space here, okay? It's a good amount of space. So I'm going to put 0, 4 in first, okay? That point, 0, 4. For this point right here. So I'm squeezing it into this function here. Imagine it's a profit function we're maximizing. So you would have 900 times 0 plus 800 times 4. So you work through this, and this gives you a value of 3,200, okay? So that's done, that corner point here. This corner point, I could get to keep track so I don't get confused. <laughs> okay, now look at this other corner point, 2 comma 4. So 2 comma 4. Again, you're going to plug that in and see what comes out. So this says 2 comma 4 right here. One second, friends, I need more chalk. Okay, there we are. Okay, so 2 comma 4. So you're going to do, let's see, uh, 900 times 2, and then plus 800 times 4. So you work this out. So that should give you 5,000. Okay? So, so far this is higher than this. Okay, anyway, the, this point is now handled. Now let's look at the point 4, 3. So 4, 3. Let's look at that point. So that's going to be 900 times 4 plus 800 times 3. You punch this into your calculator. So this is going to give you a value of 6,000. Okay? So this is now... Let's see, this point is also now handled. Now we have to do 6, 0. So, one second. 6, 0. All right, 6, 0. Plug that in. So let's see, what is that going to give us? It's going to give us 900 times 6 plus 800. Oh boy, okay, one second. 800 times 0. So this is just going to give you here an output of... 5400 okay and of course the last point now it's not it's boring it's zero zero right like this is zero zero so 900 times zero plus 800 times zero is just zero right this isn't you know it's not really interesting so of all of these the one that is interesting the one that gives us the maximum value for this objective function imagines profit so highest profit is this one right here okay right here this is the answer. At the point 4, comma 3, we get a maximum, say, profit of 6,000 big ones. <laughs> 6,000. And then these are all of the steps. Nothing really skipped. All right. It's, pretty intense. it's a pretty intense question. Do leave a like, do subscribe, leave some comments down below, suggestions for future videos. I love those. Then I don't have to think about what to do next, but I will see you in the next one.